In this tutorial, we continue to exploring Vue Pioneer 2015 and we'll create scenery a little bit more complex than what we've done before and look on some new features. Okay, so right here we have it, our uh, terrain predefined and um, I want to create some kind of ocean view maybe with island. In previous tutorials, we're using sometimes terrain and it's we even going and more exploring them. But right now, let's look on some other options. And for example, what is the boolean and how we can use them? This for now, I'm just going to click on the sphere and you notice we have a triangle. So if you right click and hold, you can select a multiple different type of boolean object, sphere, cylinder, cube, pyramid, cone, terrace, you have it plane and also alpha plane. So we will stop on alpha plane in another tutorials, but overall other ones are just very primitive. We can use it. For this purpose tutorials, we'll just go and use it sphere. So I'm going to create one sphere, just slightly enlarge and maybe squeeze from the side and put it halfway down to the ground. Let's go create another sphere. And this one I will just stretch. So notice how I modify. I'm putting them just slightly maybe around stretching, positioning, so you can have it all this different effect. So let's create one more sphere and we'll put it just on the side, maybe top right here, increase it. And let's stretch different ways slightly. Again, because our camera position kind of skewed to the side, I won't take my camera and reposition so I can see kind of those blobs. Okay, and these blobs look somewhat interesting. However, they do not look like terrain at all. In the view, we have options right here to have a boolean operation. And it's one of them to create a meta blob. What meta blob does, it's take the object we're selecting and creating kind of one, one mesh over them. So almost combining them. So right here, you notice when I select them, this option is available now for meta blob. So we have a hyper meta blob and normal. So don't worry about different. Right now we just use it normal. We'll go ahead and left click on this. Notice in preview how it's changed. So now it's become like one object. It still does not look like um, material like rock and we were going to work in a second on this, but overall it's already better. You'll notice also it is combined together. You can expand by clicking on a plus and notice right here we have it all the spheres. So it's for some reason I think I want to modify some or reposition, I can select and reposition moving this object a little bit different ways how I want it. Okay, so for example, I say, you know what, maybe I want a little bit this way. It's fine. And I'll say, maybe I want to extend a little bit more out. So you can switch shape, rough shape of this. Okay, now let's go select our meta blob and apply materials. So right here we have it, our material viewer and by selecting load materials, I can click on this and open our material browser. So in material browser, I'm going to just select red, brown rock. Unless it's look already very interesting, but I want to modify this material. So I'm going and double time click on this icon to open material editor. If by beginning you in a basic material editor, I prefer to work with the advanced that give you more properties. So just click on this button, call advanced material editor. And you notice right here, we have the properties options. Not everything is available for you with a pioneer version, but as you're going to upgrade more and more of them will be. So right now, this is work just fine. Be sure if you're on a coloring tab, go to the bump tab right here and we're going to use it displacement maps. So just check this box and you notice right here displacement what does it is apply change some of the shape of the object based on the material. So and I'm going to put depth to 15. So you can see how it's in preview change. So now we have this rough rocks kind of appearing look to this. Okay, let's go ahead, click OK. We will experiment a bit more with the um, displacement and other ones in later tutorials. And uh, if you're interested in more details, look on a lot of this, it will apply between different versions. 
So just go to the Geek at Play website or a YouTube channel, Geek at Play Studio, and I have over a thousand tutorials that going in details over every property inside the VU, including very in depth on displacement materials and other options. Okay, let's open our Meta Blob Expand, and I want to take this actually the sphere. Let's go take this one, and I'm just looking see how it's bending. I'm not necessarily like how it does, so just expand just slightly adjusting, make sure it's look a bit more interesting. Okay. You can adjust and play as much as you're interested till you achieve new um, look. You also can add more than three. You can add as many as you wanted elements to create additional rocks or some other rough shapes. So we're kind of done with creating rough shapes. So let's add a plants and you notice right on our left side, this bar we have right here plans and you have a two options left click will load it last select plan and a right click what we're going to do right now it's open selections in selection you notice we have a tabs again if you want to display names on the tabs you just click right here the gearbox go and select show tab names apply to all you can close so now we know it's tree flowers grass bush aqua sci-fi and personal you can also create your own other ones. So you notice when we're going browse from not all of them is available for us. For example, in plants, we have this icon and it's showing its current copia. So it's meaning those plants, we need to purchase some of them. And on the current copias have a huge variety of the plants that creating so you can also use them and purchase directly from them. This is a um, special plants for the wood they will respond with the wind they can have growth they have it a seasons and some other ones effect on new which is the terrain um the plant factory type plants you can also import plants as an object and exam right here we have an x frog and if you go to x frog you go to um shop and go check samples and you notice right here you have a lot of plants which is will work for the VU, um, but they're static objects. So they won't work with wind, everything. And by the way, if you even use this free, which has changed quite a bit often on XFrog um, website, the problem is you need to use import them. And when you import, you only import for the Pioneer v version, not lock items or items that you purchase from Carnacopia. If you want to import any other object, you need to purchase special import module and we'll look on those one in our tutorials later what modules you probably want to have or order depend on what you plan to do so right now let's go start doing something and i'm going to use this uh spring time wide branch so we go click and you'll notice right here it's placed interesting things about views because this is a species so if i'm going to now load another species like this well, look, they look actually two different plants, the same species, but same like a species. They have a different branches, different position of the leaves and everything. And that's what Wu does the better. So you select a plant species, you start adding, and there after my will randomize almost how they look. Okay, let's go disable one. Um, you have the ability in higher versions to modify plant right here you can see the edit object is disabled and if you even double time look it just come with a blank but in other versions you can modify slightly shape how they tilt and some other small options on this so for now we'll just use like this plant i'm going and put it right here maybe on the top now let me go slightly skew down and one problem it's hard sometimes to manage to put it this plant directly where i want it so i'm going to put over and I will use this drop down. So I'm going to click and left click and drop the object directly on the rock. Sometimes you may be stealing it, kind of maybe even going down. And you notice right here, it's kind of start disappearing some edge. So I want to go adapter in. And you know what? Let's do even tilt slightly this way. There you go. Okay, let's take my camera, move it out. So I can kind of preview. There you go. Okay, so it's look nice. Uh, plant is there. And, uh, but I want to put it maybe some grass around. And here's small tricks when you do with the view. 
So let's go ahead inside. And if I use it grass, grass sometimes not necessarily will look very nice. It will be just a lee in kind of point hard to see. So you again set using um idea how you want people to see but again you limited them what they see so for example if i'm going to select another branch same tree just make it smaller i don't need to show them all of the tree i can hide that tree behind even squish kind of more and look right now here is almost look like it's kind of bush or plant maybe around this this is all what i need to do i want just to display some cover around and um you can again click to create new. You can see bush and so on. I'm going and I'll just put it slightly on the back. Again, I'm only showing people what I want them to see. Okay, right here. And instead, sometimes instead of um, creating new and new, what you want, you want to select one, press down Alt key, hold down or option on the Mac left click and drag and what this does you can see it's actually duplicated object for me so now i can add more of them right here um at this point i want to see from the top where i place it and it's hard because my plant is on top of this so what i want to do i want to take this plant and move to another layer so like layer two in this case i have an eye icon notice if i click it's locked and it's making it visible so if i select the tree is still be there when I render it still be rendering this tree however right now as I'm modeling it's removed from my view this is useful in several cases one I can preview and second when you start having a lot of plans you'll notice maybe low performance or performance drop on your video card by hiding some of those high polygon objects you can increase speed and more focus on your art and how you create it so let me go ahead and select again this plant. I hold down Alt or Option key and move right here. Notice as I move, it's not necessarily look very nice. So let's go cheat a little bit and make it nicer. So I'm going to twist. Look how I'm just bending and put it in. So we don't see it's almost look like a plant growing on a side of this. And that's what I'm going. I'm only showing the viewers what I want them to see. So I'm going again select go right here maybe you know increase slightly in size we need different variations you can also rotate so they look differently okay and let's go move one more right here can we rotate so it looks slightly different maybe go back again towards camera and you can see we create this interesting look but they're all same color in the version of pioneer you cannot necessarily change some leaves color but in this case, what we're going to do, we'll select a different plant, which is have a different color of the leaves. And we'll just kind of place them in there. Okay, let's go rotating. This will help us to create this different diversity in some coloring. Okay, and let's bring here, shrink, go to four, right there. and split. So you can see we kind of create already coverage on this rock. Okay, um, let's go organize. So I'm going to select all of these plants and I'm just going to move them to another layer. The organizing your um, scene will help you also to properly access and find right places and as well sometimes manage by hiding and hiding some objects to access them. Okay, right here we created some preview, very simple scenery. Next, I want to add rock, water and work a little bit on atmosphere. So let's go ahead and continue this in the next portion of this tutorial.